hope, Stacy, for uh, having your name together for this. this um, it is too soon to be scheduled as something uh, in regards with the, the hurricane with the, the city stopping and, and uh, actually having it together. Um, it was accomplished a few years ago when there was uh, no previous chance of the district being under the assault of this. So we're, we're in a little bit about that last year. So um, our first talk is uh, by Kenny Lowe from Rutgers, and he's talking about the jersey of hexagonal triangular cubic point. Yeah, well, thanks, organizer, for the invitation. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Gene Song, who is a computer scientist in the Office of Hua and Chen Chi. He was a Song student and now a graduate student as well. So, uh, so let me uh, let me begin with some uh, regular patterns in the plane. Uh, these are sort of the, the most uh, uh, regular one. This is a regular hexagonal packing of the plane where every circle tangents to exactly six others. And this is a, <coughs> this is a regular uh, triangulations, uh, hexagonal triangulations. And there is also a, a regular uh, uh, square tiling uh, of, the, of, the, of the plane where every square intersects exactly six others, and the size of the the size of these squares are the same. Uh, so let me just recall a certain uh, circle packing first. So hexagonal means everything intersect six others. So a, circ a circle packing of the plane, uh, is this is a picture where, uh, 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 where this is a locally finite collection of, uh, of closed disks on the plane. And, uh, uh, and, and hexagonal is every circle is, uh, disk is intersect exa exactly six others. And it's a packing of the plane means every point in the plane is either in one of these closed disks or in one of these uh, uh, triangles bounded by three tangent circles. Uh, so he here is a, a conjecture of Thurston uh, in AD 85, which says that uh, whenever I have a hexagonal circle packing of the plane, uh, just uh, describing the sense I, I mentioned locally finite and so on, then all the radii are the same. It has to be this picture up to uh, scaling. Um, and this was uh, proved by Rodden and Solomon in, uh, in 87. So I also, I'd like to tell you the motivation of Thurston's conjecture. And it turns out Thurston's conjecture implies Riemann mapping. Uh, uh, so this is really a Riemann mapping uh, problem. And, and so uh, Rodden and Solomon solved it. And so here is one qu question, which I don't know how, how to solve it. And I also don't know the un uh, whether uh, it will have any consequences. Uh, it says that uh, whenever we have a hexagonal square tiling of the plane, so it's a locally finite collection of squares, we could have of different size, so that every square intersects exactly six others. And then the conjecture is that all squares must have the same uh, size. It's, it's no longer unique, because if you look at this picture here, and you take a horizontal strip, you can move a little bit, and that will produce a different geometric tiling. But it, it looks like this will be the only uh, ambiguities. So, uh, so but, but the talk today is about some, some uniqueness of this uh, hexagonal uh, uh, triangulation of the plane. And uh, clearly, this is not going to be unique, because you can take this triangulation, take a vertex, and move the vertex a little bit. That will be another hexagonal triangulation of the plane. So, but we, uh, we're going to add some uh, uh, conditions, and that somehow is also the, uh, the uniqueness of this uh, hexagonal triangulation is going to relate it in some sense to the uniformization theorem. Uh, so let me begin with Thurston's motivation. Uh, it's, uh, it's really a uh, curve and drift Thurston theorem. Uh, uh, it states that uh, whenever I have a, a topological triangulation of a, a of a closed disk, then it can be realized by a circle packing of the unit disk. So uh, so here is a topological triangulation. It's a finite, it's a finite collection of triangles. And then the, the curve theorem will say uh, he's going to produce a, a circle packing of the of the unit circle so that uh, so that w every every vertex in your triangulation is going to put corresponds to a, a circle uh, there. And uh, the, the boundary vertices are the circles tangent to the unit circle. And two vertices are joined by an edge, even only if two circles are tangent. So, uh, 
So th th also this this pattern is unique. And so here is the, the so-called nerve of the of the circle patterns. And the theorem says that uh, uh, if you give me any triangulation, uh, you can produce this circle pattern whose nerve is isomorphic to to this uh, triangulation. Um, so here is another uh, use of it. And this is this is a picture I stood from Ode uh, talk. So uh, let's take a, a half circle, and then we pack it by uh, uh, regular hexagonal circle patterns. And so you just put all the uh, 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 regular hexagonal circle patterns inside it, and then uh, from this uh, packing, we produce a nerve, produce a triangulation of a disk. Put uh, uh, for, uh, for every uh, circle, put, put a vertex at the centers. And by, by, um, by curve theorem, we can produce a, a, a circle packing of the, of the circle, of the disk. Uh, so this is that correspond to that. And, uh, and Susskind's conjecture is that if we refine this uh, hexagonal circle packing by shrinking the radii, this map is gonna, pro uh, is gonna uh, uh, ap approaching the Riemann mapping. So. So here is the, uh, so, so, so that was assessment's motivation, a discrete Riemann mapping uh, conjecture. So le le let, me, uh, let me just uh, rephrase it. Uh, you draw any Jordan curve. In fact, any bounded uh, simply connected domain in the complex plane. And, and now we approximate the domain by a regular hexagonal circle packing, so radii say one over n, and then use curve theorem, uh, we can produce a circle packing of the, of the unit disk. And uh, we do some normalizations. They fix one point in the in the, in the in the Jordan domains, and then uh, take that circle to the to the center of the of the unit disk. Um, and then Thurston's uh, conjecture is that uh, uh, this uh, when when you take n goes to to infinity, uh, this sequence of so so at the moment we, you have really a map f from the center of the circle to the corresponding center in the regular hexagonal packings. And then you just uh, extend it to, to a piecewise linear uh, map. And, uh, and the conjecture is that this sequence of piecewise linear map is gonna uh, converge to the Riemann mapping. So, so there are two steps involved in, uh, in, in Varden Solomon's proof. Uh, first, th they, they're gonna show the sequence is converge. Uh, and, and, and that, uh, involves showing the sequence is really uniformly k quasi conformal. There is a constant k where f n is is k quasi conformal for all n, and that uh, you can you can you can show it has a convergent subsequence. And then suppose it has a a, a convergent uh, subsequence. You want to show the limit is conformal, and that's where uh, you need to use the rigidity uh, of the of the hexagonal circle packings. And so by taking the limit. Uh, you see the limiting uh, 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 map. Uh, you sort of really uh, blow up these pictures here. You will get on one hand, on, on this side, a, 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 a circle, a hexagonal circle packing of the plane, and this is the regular one. And so, Thurston observed if this side is is uh, the regular hexagonal packing, and then the limit is conformal. So, so that's the motivation of Thurston's uh, uh, conjecture, and. Uh, so uh, what we've been doing here is try to uh, do some uh, sort of analog of, of Thurston's uh, uh, conjecture. Uh, the motivation is that circle packing produces piecewise uh, polyhedral surfaces, but those polyhedral surfaces in some sense are restricted. And so we want to know whether there is a sort of a discrete analog of uh, Riemann mapping for any polyhedral uh, metrics, uh, which may not come from uh, a, a circle packing. So let me just quickly we call uh, polyhedral surfaces. So a polyhedral metric on a surface is really a, a flat cone metric on a surface. And so every point except finite number of them are, are locally isometric to a Euclidean open set. Um, so, uh, so we can define these as a metric group in Euclidean triangles uh, uh, along their uh, edges. And so these are the pictures. And, and the, the goal here is try to see whether we can uh, whenever I have a, a polyhedral surface, now can be described by uh, a, a sort of finite set of data. I, I can I can put a vertices coming from the the cone points and and, and draw the edges between cone points by uh, by geodesics, 
and, and produce a sub subdivision. So these polyhedral surfaces can be described by a uh, by a edge length. So uh, I, I give you a polyhedral a cone metric, produce a geometric triangulation where all uh, vertices uh, contain the cone points, and, and then the metric can be described by a finite set of numbers assigned ev every edge a positive number subject to the uh, triangular inequality. And, and these guys uh, have a discrete curvature, which is uh, 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 focused on the, on the vertices. So, so it's defined to be uh, the, the curvature at the vertex, the, the, the vertex is really a cone, is defined to be 2 pi minus the sum of the inner angles goes into that vertex. And so here is, here is a picture. Um, so, so this this curvature uh, definition here is independent of the triangulations. It's, it's, it's well defined, and and this metric to de describe it, it depends on the triangulations, wh where there may be many of them. Just fix one, we have a, a way to describe it. Um, and uh, I like to also say uh, this is what I learned a lot from the from <laughs> by working with computer graphics people. Uh, so they, they, the triangulation they deal with is always uh, Delaunay. So a, a polyhedral metric with respect to a triangulation is called a Delaunay. Uh, uh, if uh, for every edge in your triangulation, there will be two angles facing it. So it's a Delaunay if the sum of the two angles facing a fixed edge is at most pi. Um, and now uh, it's, a, it's a well known fact that uh, uh, every co-metric, oops, it's too small. So uh, whenever I have a flat co-metric on, on a closed surface, then you can always produce a Delaunay triangulation whose vertices are the cone points. And so, so these are sort of naturally supplied, uh, supplied uh, triangulations uh, for any cone metric. And so this, these will be the, 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 the key uh, uh, player for our discussion, so is these, these uh, Delaunay triangulations. So, uh, so me, let me also recall uh, briefly the, the motivation for our, discu uh, for our discussion of the, of the hexagonal triangulation. So we defined, we defined some kind of discrete conformal uh, conformality of, of polyhedral metrics uh, uh, two years ago, and, and, and we, we, we established some discrete version of the, of the, discrete, uh, of the, of the uniformization theorem. So, so that's the motivation, and, and, and I want to show the, these these uh, concept is going to converge to the smooth. And so let me quickly recall uh, a discrete conformality of polyhedral metrics. S is a closed surface, V is a finite set of points. So suppose I have two uh, polyhedral metrics, D and D prime, on a closed surface. Uh, and we say these two are discrete conformal uh, if we can find a sequence of polyhedral metrics, D1, uh, D1 f from the first one and D2, uh, DK is the last one is, uh, is D prime. And the sequence of, of, of geodesic triangulations, T1, TK on the surface. Uh, so, 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 so by this, I really mean the vertices of the T, TIs is, is fixed. It's always the same as, as a given uh, set V. Uh, subject to co two conditions, the TI is a Delaunay in DI uh, first. And second, if, if Ti and Ti plus one, if the two adjacent uh, triangulations are not the same, then the two metrics are isometric by isometry homotopic to the identity. And so essentially these are the same, uh, the same object here. We choose different uh, triangulations of it. Uh, these are the uh, Delaunay. So, so the Delaunay triangulation associated to a flat cone metric uh, generically is unique. But in some cases, it may not be unique. And so th these are the two different choices. Uh, and, and the third one is if, if two uh, adjacent triangulations are the same, uh, well then the metric has to be changed. It's, it's changed according to some scaling rule. So I can produce, uh, I can produce a, a function defined on the vertices to the real number so that the length of an edge V and VI in one metric and the length of the edge V and V prime in another metric are related by a scaling. So this has to be a positive number here. So if that occurs, and then we say uh, this is sort of a vertex scaling change of the, of the triangulations. 
So this is, uh, so here is a picture, which probably is a better way to illustrate the idea. So suppose we take a, the boundary of a tetrahedra, think of that as a, as a co-metric, and uh, what is the meaning of a discrete conformal change? Well, uh, we take a sort of a natural, say, this is a triangulation of it, and first we make sure this triangulation is delaunay with respect to the, to the metric. So this, this, the sum of the two angles facing every edge is the most pi, and assuming that uh, we, we are now uh, allowed to take a vertex and, and put a positive number, say k here, and, and change the metric by, by scale, all edges going to that, to that vertex by the, by the, by the number. And so, 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 so here you have the lens ABC, now after scaling will be Ka, Kb, Kc. And when doing this scaling change, we have to make sure there are two conditions are satisfied. First, we have to make sure the triangle inequality is still preserved because, because uh, so you, after you do the scaling, we have Ka, Kb, and there is a lens here, like x here. But make sure they, they still satisfy the, the, the Delaunay condition, uh, the, the triangle inequality. And second, uh, we also uh, need to make sure that uh, you, 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 you do a stretching and shrinking that uh, it's not going to destroy uh, Delaunay. So, so it's still Delaunay and uh, satisfies the triangle inequality. And so at certain stage, okay, then uh, if you look at this edge, say a red edge here, uh, the, the sum of the two angles here may, beco may become pi. In, in, in those situations, the Delaunay triangulation is not unique, and so, 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 so we are allowed to make a diagonal switch. So this, uh, this, this operation is really here, and um, that's uh, this the, the vertex scaling operation. So now you keep going. So this is the process uh, that we uh, defined as a discrete conformal change. So, uh, so he here is the theorem that we proved. Uh, you take any uh, polyhedral metric on a, a closed uh, surface S um, with a finite set of vertices, and you take any uh, K star, it's a prescribed curvature uh, from the set of vertices to uh, real numbers subject to the Gauss finite, then, uh, then there is a unique new polyhedral metric D star, which is unique up to scaling on, on the surface with a set of vertices, such, a, such that uh, this D star is discrete conformal to D, just uh, under the same uh, change, and, uh, and the discrete curvature uh, of D star is a given function. So, uh, so, uh, so if you take K star to be the constant function, then we, we call uh, D star is a, is a discrete uh, constant curvature metric, discrete conformal to the given one. Okay, so, and this, this D star can be found by minimizing a um, a convex function. So, so this D star can be found by an algorithm. So, so we have uh, we have uh, softwares which I'm going to show you how to find these D stars. So th that's that's the the the, the motivation. Um, now, the oh, okay. So this slice is for Dave. <laughs> he asked really insightful questions. So. So the question is, why, why do you define this vert vertex scaling? Why do you call this a, a discrete conformal? What, what's, what's the motivation? And uh, here is one. Uh, so suppose we have a Riemannian metric G on a compact surface S, uh, and we have, a, we have a, a positive smooth function, and we make a, a conformal change of the metric. So this is a, a picture like that. And we want to compute, uh, uh, take two points on your surface, and you want to compute the geodesic uh, distance uh, from P to Q in the, in the conformal metric and the original metric. And we want to see what's the difference between the two. It turns out if you multiply the original one by just uh, this conformal uh, factor, uh, the value of the conformal factor at the two endpoints, and then uh, the difference between the two is uh, is uh, is in terms of the cubic uh, of, of the distance between p and q. So uh, so that's that's one motivation which says that uh, you, when we do a discretized uh, uh, discretization of Riemannian metric, we just uh, take a geodesic and replace that by take a geodesic triangle, replace it by Euclidean triangles. And so so this suggests the the definition is reasonable. So this uh, was a reasonable definition. 
OK, so, so here is, uh, uh, here is uh, uh, the motivation. Uh, I, I, I take a, 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 a Jordan curve in a, in a complex plane. I take three points, uh, mark three points on the boundary, and we have a, a Jordan domain. And now I'm going to approximate that by a, a, a triangulation, the hexag regular hexagonal triangulation of it. And we have three points, uh, mark three points corresponding to that. And so this is, say, one over n equilateral uh, uh, triangulation, which approximate this. And I'll take this, this is a simply connected domain, double it. You will get a triangulated two sphere with three points marked in the boundary. And now apply this uh, uh, theorem that we proved. Uh, then, uh, so, so we prescribe the curvature as uh, the curvature at the three points to be four pi over three, and the curvature at all other points to be to be zero, and that will uh, that will produce a, uh, a equilateral triangle, as a as this uh, discrete uniformization produces for us. Um, and uh, the conjecture is that when n goes to zero, uh, this map is going to converge to the Riemann mapping from the Jordan domain to the equilateral triangle, sending these three points to the three vertices. Okay, so that's that's a motivation for us uh, to uh, to ask this uh, rigidity. So, so, so the strategy will be the same as what uh, Warden Sullivan uh, uh, used. We want to show this approximating map is say uniformly k quasi conformal and then we want to show there is a uniqueness involved on the hexagonal triangulation of the of the complex planes so uh, so i should also say that uh, this the situation here is, uh, is probably more complicated than curb and gf systems uh, uh, case because uh, we are uh, we in this discrete conformal uh, process. We allow to have the change. We allow the triangulation to change. And so, so here, if you look at all vertices inside its uh, degree six, and 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 if you uh, if you apply this theorem, uh, you do some diagonal switches, and so the so 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 you you may see some degree not sev seven appears. Okay. So the 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 goal uh, is to show that. Uh, if you if you give me a compact set in the inside the Jordan domain, and if you take this uh, mesh or the diameter of the triangles really small, those triangles inside here, which intersect in the given uh, compact set, will not be uh, th there will be no flips effect of that, and so all the the, the changes occurring is gonna only appear in the boundary. It's not gonna go inside it. So that that's that would be the so so I'd like to tell you that we we have some uh, theorems like that but uh, but I'd like to compare this with Warden uh, Sullivan's so his theorem can be phrased as follows uh, let's let the T to be a a geometric hexagonal triangulation of a simply connected domain in C and so they prove a stronger uh, theorem than Sesten's conjecture so take any uh, Geometric hexagonal triangulation of the of a simply connected domain in in C, and and this triangulation comes from a circle pattern. Meaning, uh, we can uh, uh, whenever you see this triangle in the in the in in this geometric triangulation is coming from a circle pattern. So there is a circle pattern here. So the length of an edge between V and V prime should be the sum of the two radii of the circle associated to to V and V prime. So, so the assumption is that uh, there is a, a positive R. This is really the, 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 the radius function. So that the length of, an, an, of, a, of every edge in your triangulation is the sum of the two uh, radii. Then, uh, then uh, what they proved is that this, this function is a constant function. Okay, so it has to be a regular hexagonal. And, and here is what we proved. So suppose, again, T is a geometric hexagonal triangulation of a, of a simply connected domain in the complex plane uh, subject to two conditions now. Uh, the triangulation is Delaunay, which is uh, uh, built in, in, our, in our previous theorem. So, and 
and it's uh, the discrete conformal, which can be translated into this language. Uh, so you can now, uh, instead of the radii, now there is a positive function defined on the vertices. <laughs> so the, the length of uh, the length of an every edge is a modification of the two of the two uh, uh, weights at the vertices. And so th this circle cracking is really sum of the radii, and uh, in this new scaled uh, version, it's a, it's a modification. And then uh, then the function has to be constant. So, uh, so that's uh, that's what we proved, um, and and so this is uh, the second sort of the second step we required to prove the convergence, and we can now use this to prove the following theorem. Um, uh, you you give me any Jordan domain uh, in the in the complex plane, and and take three points A B C in a boundary, then we can find uh, a sequence approximating sequence omega n. Uh, approaching this uh, 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 given domain so that this approximating uh, domain is uh, polyhedral domains can be triangulated by equilateral triangles, so size, say, 1 over n, and the associated discrete uniformization maps that we produced before converge to the Riemann mapping, uh, uh, sending this omega to the, to the interior of the equilateral triangles. I mean, in fact, the, it's uh, the closure of the of the of the Jordan domain to the closed uh, uh, equilateral triangles and setting A, B, C to the vertices. So that's what we proved. Um, I don't have time today to talk about the proof here, but I'd like to show you how this is proved uh, uh, in the rest of the talk. But the proof, uh, in fact, we we just went back to Rod and Solomon's proof, and we we produce a new proof of it and. And this new proof, it turns out, can be generalized. Th th there are now many different proofs of Rod and Solomon theorems. I think the best proof is probably by Odette Schwarm. It's like two-page proof of it. And the key uh, in, it's a topological proof. The key step in Schwarm's proof is, that is the observation that uh, any two circle intersect at two points, at most two points. So, so but, but those proofs cannot be generalized in our situation. So we, we, we produce a new proof of it, and so here is uh, a new proof. Um, so let's let V to be the set of the vertices of the regular hexagonal uh, uh, triangulation. It's so this is a standard V. And, uh, and we, we, li we like to think this Martin Solomon theorem uh, as kind of a discrete uh, Liouville type uh, uh, theorems. The Liouville type theorem will say a bounded a discrete harmonic function on this lattice is, is a constant. And so uh, and so the, 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 the one of the simplest proof is to look at the difference between the between between take a delta in the lattice and look at the difference and show it's a constant. And so this is the stra st strategy we're going to use to prove uh, to prove uh, Rod and Solomon theorem. So so this is a re uh, sort of restatement of Rod and Solomon. Uh, the, the it's a hexagonal triangulation. The length is equal to sum of two. Uh, positive radii. So we, we, we take log of the radii. So u is now a function on, on v. Uh, the radius is e to the u. So that's a picture. Now first, there is an amazing uh, simple observation. This is really uh, by Rod and Solomon, which says that uh, if you have uh, a hexagonal uh, circle packing, uh, like that. So if you have a circle packing, this is the local result. If we, uh, you have a circle and six other circles tangent to it, uh, then uh, the ratio of the of the of two adjacent radii is uh, is universally bounded. So so uh, if you have a, say take a circle radius one and then uh, six others are tangent to it, and then the ratio between the two cannot be really huge. It's it's a, a really uh, very simple. Uh, just draw a picture, you can see. So so this implies that the difference, if we have two uh, adjacent vertices v and v prime, then the 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 difference of the u value, this is the log of the of the of the radii, is universally bounded. And by the way, this implies immediately that uh, uh, that the, approx the approximation uh, map f n. Is universal is is uniformly k quasi conformal, so this is uh, how 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 
how they proved it. And so as a consequence, uh, we can now uh, see in, in for, for this U, um, uh, if you take two, two vertices whose combinatorial distance is, is n, so the combinatorial distance is really you choose the, the, e the shortest edge path from u to v and count the number of vertices in the edge path. And then uh, you can bound the value of u at, at one uh, endpoint by the other one times the constant times, uh, times this distance. And the second is the maximum principle of, of Thurston's. So this is really in Thurston's notes, but phrased in a different uh, uh, way. So, so maybe I'm going to draw a picture first. So suppose we have uh, we have a it's again a local result. We have a a circle in a plane and six other circles tangent to it, forming such a flower. And let's uh, call the the radii of these circles to be r1, r2, and r0 is a is a radius in the center. And the maximal principle says that uh, if you if you increase the central radius and decrease the, 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 the boundary radii, then there is no way you can produce a flat, uh, uh, flat structure. So then, then you cannot maintain the curvature at the center to be a zero. So if you increase the, increase the, the radius and, and decrease the radius outside, then uh, there's no way you can preserve the, the flatness. And the proof is really simple. So here is a picture. Uh, it's, it's just uh, take a triangle, and uh, and which is uh, coming from the triangle comes from the center, so three uh, pairwise tangent circles, and the radii is r1, r2, r3. The curvature comes from these in angles a1, a2, a3. Now let's suppose uh, uh, r1, r2, r3 are fixed. And so these two radii are fixed. I'm going to increase the first radius, and so increase a little bit. Uh, it's, it's like this picture, and so this circle has larger side. These two uh, sides are the same. Then what Thurston observed is, is that if you do that, this angle is going to be decreasing. If you increase that, and these two angles is going to be increasing. Okay, so that's, uh, and, and you apply that, and that's, that will be, uh, that will be it. Okay, so as a consequence, what we uh, observed is that, uh, suppose we have two, uh, um, flat uh, circle packing metric on, on the same uh, uh, hexagonal uh, triangulations, and you look at the ratio of the radii. This ratio uh, has no maximum point unless it's a constant. So if you look at the ratio here, uh, so if this occurs, the ratio will achieve the maximum point in the center. Okay, so that's impossible. So this is sort of the <coughs> maximum principle. Okay, now knowing these two, uh, let me give you uh, uh, our new proof of the Rod and Sullivan. Uh, so, uh, so take take this vertex V to be the lattice point of the regular hexagonal uh, triangulation. Uh, this is a repeat statement of that. Uh, so, so U are the the U functions are the log of the radii. We want to prove this. Now, suppose this this function U, the log of the radii, is not a constant. And, uh, and let's derive a contradiction as follows. So first, uh, we can find one generator of the lattice. This uh, V is a lattice. Take one of the generators so that the difference is not a constant. Uh, so the supremum of the difference is a two. So this V and this is adjacent vertex. Uh, the difference is not equal to zero. And uh, it's, it's a finite because of the, uh, because of the, uh, the ratio lemma. The difference between the two is universally bounded. So, so we have some lambda, which is not a constant and is a finite. And now, uh, now we take a sequence of vertices uh, in, in this uh, triangulation. So that the difference uh, between the two adjacent u values is, is one over n close to the supremum. Um, and then, um, and the difference between any two is the most lambda because of the definition. And the difference between two, any two adjacent one is MOC. This is the ratio lemma. That was uh, Rod and Sullivan. So this is the definition. This is what we choose. So what we are really doing is uh, uh, 
uh, uh, I'm going to define a new function, u function, which is uh, this is a normalization. Take the original one, shift it, shift the origin to v n, and uh, subtract by universal number. And so, so, so this is uh, the picture is is the following. So in the origin of Vn, we have the, uh, we have a, a the origin a, at here, and now I have Vn. Let's see the curves here. Vn is uh, is a, a a circle whose there is adjacent uh, circle whose ratio of the radii is one over n close to the supremums. And so I'm going to shift the the center here to here, and then I will do a normalization. So this this radii could be really big. I just uh, rescale it to make this one. So that's what uh, So shift it here. Uh, and for this new uh, new function, uh, it takes value 0 and 0 because of the definition. This is a normalization. So for the new circle pattern metric, uh, this, this has radius 1 at that center. So and, uh, and this is by definition. Uh, and that's uh, that's again the definition. And this is given by the ratio lemma. We can bound any vertices, which is a distance, say, uh, k from the origin. Then the value is bounded by c times k. So that's just the do shifting the vertices to the to the new vertex, which is is uh, is sort of. Uh, achieving uh, uh, close to this lambda and rescale it. Uh, so th this is what we have in the previous slides. Uh, then we have now uh, a new sequence of functions, un, defined on the vertices called un. And this sequence uh, has, you can, you can produce a convergent subsequence for it uh, because of this fact. So you can control this distance here is independent of n, so we can produce a convergent subsequence. And for this convergent subsequence, uh, uh, for the circle packing metric associated to this convergent uh, function, it is still flat because the flatness, the curvature, depends on the inner angle, and the inner angle is a continuous function of the of the edge. So so uh, so because all of these are. <laughs> Are flat, and this is again a flat metric. It may not be complete. Uh, and you look at the difference of the two functions. Uh, this function now, according to the definition, achieves maximum point at the origin. Uh, so when we uh, let n goes to, to infinity, this is going to converge to lambda, and all the values is amongst lambda. And so this has a max maximum point at the, at the origin, and therefore by the maximum principle, it has to be a constant. So for every vertex, for this new uh, new uh, circle packing metric, you take v and move in a in a delta direction. The uh, the radii, uh, uh, the difference of the radii is always is constant. Now we repeat the same thing. So so just to go through the same process. Apply apply the whole process instead of u. Apply to u u sharp, and and we produce the second limit. You double sharp, and now we have we choose a another generator delta prime, and and, and in this case this a new circle packing metric, uh, this condition uh, is a is a consequence of that, and this is a new new one. We take another subsequence, so uh, we have now a function defined on the lattice uh, whose uh, uh, difference in delta and delta primes are constant, and so it's a linear function. So linear means really a restriction of linear function on the on the on the lattice. And now here comes some really nice observation of Peter Doyle. So Peter Doyle, s s there is a spiral circle packing discovered by him. Uh, so the spiral circle packings are, are circle packings on the on the uh, based on the hexagonal triangulation, where the radii is e to the u, where u is linear. And the key observation of, of, of Doyle says that whenever u is linear, that implies that the metric is flat. So, so here is a picture. So th this, is, uh, what, uh, this is really what uh, Doyle observed. It's a really nice observation. You take, a, say, a circle uh, tangent to six others, and uh, the radii 
are, are prescribed, say the radius in the center is A, and this is B, and this is uh, one A, B, and, and this is A, the opposite is one over A because of linearity. And, uh, and from this we produce a, a, a polyhedral metric, say uh, uh, the triangle one A, B has a length one plus A, one plus B, A, B, and, and so on. And, and it's, uh, it's very simple to see that uh, if you have such assignment of the radii, then the center here has uh, flat uh, curvature, the, 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 the angle sum uh, to be zero. And so, so really what's going really going on is, uh, for example, I'm gonna draw, draw a picture here. Uh, uh, you, have, uh, you, have this, uh, you have this triangulations, and these two triangles are really similar, okay? And, and so, so uh, this triangle, this triangle, these three are similar triangles, and, and therefore uh, uh, these three angles sub to be pi, and the other three are also similar, so sub to be two pi. So that's what, uh, uh, what you get. Oops. <laughs> so this is the, the, the picture, and now you, you do, do the development map, because uh, we assign the, the center of, the, of, the, of this, so the topological hexagonal triangulation is, is linear, and, and now we, we do a development map. And the development map is going to be a spiral. And so this is Doyle's spiral. Which, and you can Google it, and there are now many pictures in the web about Doyle's spirals. And so, so his obser <coughs> main, main observation is, this <coughs> is the following. If I have a non-constant linear function defined on the, on the, on the vertices, so this uh, the standard lattice here, then the circle packing metric whose radius is e to the f is always flat, and the development map is going to send two uh, disjoint circles to two circles in the plane with overlapping interior. So the, this, this, this spiral picture will never produce embedding. So there's always some overlapping. Uh, so you may, th th some picture here looks like there are no, uh, there are no overlapping. So in fact, this circle, this circle, this is a covering map in some sense. This circle comes from two. Uh, different circles is mapping to the same circle. And so this is a generic case. You have a purple circle and, and say a green circle is really have some uh, 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 overlapping. Okay, now uh, now using this, we can now, so 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 this scaled metric here, this limit now uh, have uh, have non-injective de development map according to Doria. But but this sequence is the limit of, of, of another sequence. And so uh, you can conclude uh, conclude this, uh, this circle packing metric, which you do some shifting the vertices and do scaling, which will limit to here, will have a non-injective development map, because here you have two open <coughs> set whose images are, are openly overlapping. And you keep one doing one more time. This, the original metric will, have, will, will not have injective development map. But that, that was the assumption of Rodden Sullivan, that it's a really a triangulation of a simply connected domain in a complex plane the development map is injective. And so that's how uh, uh, the, the contradiction is derived. So, so what we need here is a ratio lemma for taking limit. The ratio lemma take, says we can take limit on this. And the maximum principle, then the spiral situations. It turns out all of these three uh, holds in our situation. And that's how we, we prove the, the theorem. So, uh, so let me now go to our situation, which is a little bit more complicated. Uh, uh, so uh, I like to, <coughs> when we take a limit, we need to, to have some degenerations. And so a generalized triangle is a, uh, is a triangle whose lengths are positive, or is a, consists of three positive numbers subject to the, to the triangle inequality. So this is a non-degenerated triangles. The degenerate one is just a line. Uh, so this is a line with A1, A2, and, and A3 is A1 plus A2. But, but for, for these generalized triangles, the angles are still well defined. So for, for this guy, you have 0, 0, pi. And furthermore, these angles uh, are still a continuous function of the length. Okay, so, uh, so this is. Uh, so a, a generalized polyhedral metric on a triangulated surface now, we assign every edge a positive number uh, subject to this condition. Okay, so, uh, so, so the
topology may not be even one uh, two dimensional. So the, a generalized polyhedral metric could, could collapse a surface to a one dimensional line. That's okay. Okay, so this. Uh, uh, and we still have the curvature well defined. Uh, just uh, there's two pi minus the sum of these angles, and this flat is the curvature which should be zero. And uh, a simple lemma: it's uh, you, if you have a simply connected surface and a, a flat uh, generalized polyhedral metric, you can still define a development map. Okay, so it's a simple. This is sort of monogamy theorem. And uh, we can still define what is a Delaunay, sum of the two angles facing every edge is the most pi because the angle is defined. And this is the, the discrete conformal change, which I like to recall. So suppose we have a function defined on the edges of a triangulation, and we, as we have a function, which I, uh, we're gonna call this W discrete conformal uh, factors defined on the vertices. And then uh, we can rescale them the, the L function by the conformal factor. This is uh, just multiply the length uh, of the original one by two factors associated to the, to the M, two endpoints. Okay, so that's, yeah. yes. Is there some relationship between AI and LI? Uh, AI and LI, uh, uh, yes, you can, exp you mean the, Yes, it's a, it's a cosine law. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's this is the only one. The lens are all uh, still positive. Okay, so uh, so let me just go back. Uh, let's let T to be the standard topological hexagonal triangulation, and uh, and and L not is a constant function one. So this, this triangulation plus this assignment to the edges gives you the regular hexagonal triangulation. Um, and let V to be the standard lattice, which, which is this, the set of vertices of T. Um, and this is scaling factor. So, so this is a, sort of another uh, rephrase of our result. Uh, we take the complex plane, this topological hexagonal triangulation. This is a, a scaling, vertex scaling, the standard uh, standard hexagonal um, triangulation. And suppose this metric is flat, delon A, and uh, it has injective developed map. And then uh, we, we, we want to conclude this W has to be a constant. Okay, so this is the analog of Rod and Sullivan. So first uh, we have the same uh, uh, ratio lemma analog to uh, Rod and Sullivan. So suppose we have, uh, this is a, uh, a uh, triangulated hexagon with one vertex in the interior. Uh, suppose this, this is obtained from the standard one by, by vertex <coughs> scaling. Okay. And uh, suppose uh, this is a generalized PR metric flat at the origin, the sum of the angle here is, is pi. Uh, B1 is uh, one radius one uh, uh, neighborhood of the vertex, this is a combinatorial vertex. And then uh, take any two adjacent edges, x and y, the ratio is at most six. Okay, so, uh, and then there's a proof is basically uh, 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 triangular inequality plus, uh, plus this condition. Okay. So this condition, this condition can be phrased in terms of the the cross ratio as follows. So uh, it's, it's really uh, like A, A prime, B, B prime. So the, it's, it's A, A prime equals B, B prime. So this <coughs> metric, this, this metric comes from the vertex uh, scaling of the standard one. It's the same thing as uh, uh, multiplication of, oppo of opposite edge lengths are the same. Okay, so that's this just keep using the cross ratio condition plus triangular inequality plus the fact it's it's flat at the at the uh, at the center that implies this is a very elementary and simple argument and then there is a maximum principle which I will say a little bit more later but it says the following uh, so suppose we have a um, 
we have a, a flat metric, uh, it's a generalized uh, uh, polyhedral metric on this uh, triangulated hexagon. Uh, and uh, it's flat at the center. And, and, and take this metric and you, you, you do a vertex scaling. So this is my capital L, and this is a scaled one. And suppose in, in the scaling, the maximum point of U achieved at the, at the center, then it has to be a constant. And this is sort of the analog of Thurston's uh, uh, lemma for the circle packing. So uh, you, in that case, it's basically adding, adding the radii. Now you just multiply it. It still has the same result. I will say more about it. And then we need we need the angle lemma now. It's it's a little bit more complicated because of the degeneration. So, so you you fix any vertex in the hexagonal lattices and look at the B two. Uh, this is the radius two neighborhood of the vertex. So take any ver uh, vertex in the lattice and look at the combinatorial distance two uh, uh, ball. And uh, if we have a, a Delaunay uh, generalized polyhedral metric, which is flat at all vertices, at all interior vertices, and the development map is injective, then, uh, then uh, among, among these triangles, there is one triangle which is not degenerated. So there is one triangle whose all angles are at least uh, point, uh, or, or 0.01. So it cannot be all de degenerated to a, a flat line lines. So that's uh, because uh, we we need we need to take a limit, and uh, in our situation, it could all collapse to a line. And this this lemma will say it's not going to occur. And, and now there is uh, also a spiral situation, uh, so 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 all of the three can can be carried over. Uh, so this is Doyle's uh, picture. Uh, the uh, these are the radii, and uh, and the the length of edge is the sum of the two radii. And you. You look at the development map. You see this picture. Now, uh, in in our situation, uh, here is the, the the combinatorics. So, so let's say normalize the center here is radius has assignment one. This vertex has conformal factor a, b, and so on. If this is a, this is one over a, and the length of the edge is a morphication. So one times a is a b, and so that's the pi picture you see. And if you look at the, so so these are the the lengths of the triangles, and and you stare at this picture, you see uh, this triangle and this triangle so are similar. If you multiply one by uh, by a squared, take this triangle, multiply by a squared, and that will be here. And so is this by symmetry. So so, so we have pretty much the similar situation like uh, Doyle. So. So the sum of these three angles, one, two, three, is the sum of the tri in the angles of the triangles. So one, two, three, sum to be pi, and by symmetry, these two sum to be pi. And so it's always flat. So this is a picture. You do the development map. It's again a spiral picture, and two triangles, uh, the development map is going to send a two triangle to two overlapping triangles. So this was, in fact, discovered by my collaborator four years ago. So the statement is uh, following. Uh, again, we take the standard lattice. And w is a non-constant linear function on this lattice. Um, and, and we need to assume something. Because uh, uh, if you just rescale the, the, the standard metric by, by this w, uh, it may not satisfy the triangle inequality. And, and assuming this, uh, this triangle inequality is satisfied, then it's always flat. And so here is the argument. And furthermore, suppose this whole picture does not collapse to one dimensional. So suppose there is a non-degenerated triangle in this, uh, in this metric. Then you can find uh, two non-degenerated triangles here uh, whose image under the divine map overlap uh, in the interior. Now uh, we just go through the, the same machinery, and, and we, we just prove this. Okay. So let me, uh, let me finish by uh, telling you uh, the proof of the maximum principle. It was uh, uh, this picture. So, so we take a Euclidean triangle, and we are going to do this uh, discrete conformal change by assigning vertices uh, like 
uh, EU2, EU3, and EU1, and, and change the, the triangle by multiplying the length according to the vertex weight. So this will be the new triangle here. Um, and AI, and so L is going to be fixed. Uh, in our actual situation, the Ls are all constant one. And now this angle AI is now a function of U. So we want to know what happened if you make some changes of U, uh, its effect on these angles. So, uh, so that's that. Uh, the, the, the simple observation is that uh, if I is not equal, to, if you take AI and uh, take, say, a, take U3 and you increase U3 uh, and, and, and U1, U2 fixed, then so obviously A3 is going to decrease since this is becoming bigger. So that's this fact. And the interesting fact is also this. If you take AI in UJ, it's equal to cotangent co uh, AK. So IJKs are distinct. This is uh, uh, the situation is a little bit worse than uh, uh, Sesten's case. In Sesten's case, if you increase the radius, and radius 1, this is going to be uh, decreasing. Both of that is going to be increasing. But in our case, uh, uh, we don't have uh, control of the increasing uh, u1. You don't have a sign control of a2, a3. But it's given by this cotangent ak. Okay. So, but that's, it turns out, is enough for us to prove the maximum principle. So, um, so, so he, here is one. Uh, this is the original uh, uh, metric. And now uh, we assigned every vertex this u function, and we do a scaling. Okay, so, so this u functions, and say I'm going to increase uh, the the conformal factor in v zero, and decrease these guys, and let's see what happened. What's what what is its effect on the curvature here? Um, it's going to be uh, look at the rate of change. It's going to be of this factors. So if you, if, you, if you increase u1, these angles are going to be decreasing by that. So the, 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 the effect coming from the center is always a negative. It's going to be negative. Now the effect from the nearby one is going to be equal to cotangent ai plus aj because of this fact. And now uh, here we are going to use the Delaunay condition that uh, because the Delaunay ai plus aj is the most pi, and so the sum of the cotangent is going to be uh, uh, non-negative. And so, so there's a negative sign. So the total thing is going to be negative. So, so, so the total effect will be uh, a decreasing of the curvature. So that's, uh, that's how uh, that's proved. But well, we have to do more. Uh, so what I'm saying here is if all triangles are non-degenerated, -de this is a, a rigorous proof. And then if some of them have become flat, we have to be more careful. OK, so let me uh, finish by showing you uh, uh, a software we produce. My collaborator, uh, David Gu, produced it. So, uh, so this is uh, a 3D scanned human, uh, human face. Uh, these are polyhedral. Uh, so 3D scan really produce uh, the, 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 the vertices for you, and then you do some interpolations produce a triangulation. And, and there are lots of software to, to change from a triangulation to a Delaunay. This is uh, a, a lots of standard software. Um, then we want to map that uh, to, uh, to, the, to the disk. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's the software we have. And you can see the triangulations. Okay, so, uh, so, so, so w w our theorem now can guarantee that this is really uh, uh, approximating the uniformization metric. Okay, I'll stop there.